Welcome to PainResource.com and this, our very first audio podcast, the historic Pain Pod number one, the meningitis outbreak of October 2012. The CDC has reported that as many as 13,000 people may have received possibly contaminated steroid injections from the New England Compounding Center of Massachusetts. Health officials say that 75 medical facilities in 23 states received the contaminated steroid injections from the NECC. And as of Tuesday, October 10th, nearly 120 people nationwide have become ill and 12 have died. Joining us today to discuss the outbreak is the medical director of the Illinois Pain Institute, Dr. John Prinskus. Dr. Prinskus, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. My first question for you is, and I, and I have a list of questions here, but this has just popped into my head. How does this happen? It, it happened uh, because the uh, preparation of methylprednisolone, which is a type of anti-inflammatory steroid that was manufactured by the New England Compounding Pharmacy called NECC, uh, it appears that sometime during the uh, production process, it was uh, contaminated with aspergillosis, which is an extremely tough and resilient uh, fungus. And uh, since these preparations were prepared without any type of um, um, other uh, medication or antibacterial uh, medication in the vial, uh, the aspergillosis uh, remained in the solution until apparently it was uh, injected in the patients. Okay. And uh, most people go to their doctor and they don't even worry about whether or not they are going to have contaminated medications or treatments or um, or anything of that nature. So if, if, if I had my doctor recommended a steroid injection, should I be concerned about contracting meningitis? There's always a risk of contracting meningitis uh, with any type of epidural steroid injection. Uh, right now, all of the uh, products produced by NECC uh, are pulled. So, in other words, there is no uh, further NECC product uh, that is produced, and also the uh, CDC has advised all medical practices to cease using it uh, entirely. So. Uh, those products uh, should no longer be available, uh, and uh, the patient might want to ask their uh, pain physician who's uh, planning on doing the epidural injection if the cortisone uh, they're using is commercially prepared or, compa- or, or prepared in a compounding pharmacy, and also does the uh, cortisone solution have a little bit of uh, anti uh, microbial uh, preservative mixed in with it. Yeah, that that, that can, that's a question I was going to ask you is what's the difference between a commercially prepared um, drug and a compounded drug? They're quite uh, different. A compounded drug ca- can be prepared by a uh, pharmacy uh, uh, that has the uh, sterile apparatus and setup to do so and they can actually mix whatever medications the doctor advises them to in whatever concentrations and then ship them out. A commercially prepared steroid preparation is one that uh, would uh, be considered to be one that is mass-produced and not uh, not tailor-made, so to speak, and uh, these commercially uh, prepared steroid preparations uh, generally have uh, greater oversight than those uh, produced in compounding pharmacies. Is, so one is, in some, would some argue, is safer than the other? Uh, yeah, you might, one might say that the commercially prepared uh, uh, steroid medication preparations have an extra step or an extra layer of, uh, of oversight or supervision that they have to uh, meet. That typically wouldn't be a question necessarily that we would have asked our doctors until now, I guess, but it, it's it's important now that people know that they need to ask their doctors questions that they might have otherwise not thought to ask um, in in the light of this situation, I guess. I think that's I think that's a fair that's a fair uh, 
first one statement. of the things we we try to pre preach on on our in our magazine and on the website is to to not be afraid to ask doctors questions that because most patients just assume the doctor knows what they're doing um, and the doctor usually does know what they're doing but uh from time to time something like this could happen and we wouldn't have otherwise known so um and and i i certainly encourage questions uh I encourage patients to bring in things they've brought in that they read on the internet, and then it um, it's important to patients and it gives them a peace of mind. Yeah. So I, I certainly encourage that in my patients to bring in all their questions. Uh, what what should they look for if they have received a steroid injection um, with medication that was prepared by NECC? Um, the, the CDC or the Centers for Disease Control has has advised all MedFDC preparations uh, that they. Uh, must contact the patients. They're, each state department of health, uh, as I understand, is involved in this process. And so there's an active process to reach out to each and every patient that may have received uh, a product uh, from an ECC. So why would, did physicians in, uh, I guess it was 27 states, use the NECC preparation in the first place? I think there may have been two reasons. Uh, there, there may be more, but there's two that come to mind. Uh, one is that... Um, uh, there, there, there are some physicians that feel that uh, having a small amount of a preservative uh, in a uh, steroid preparation can be irritating to a, to a nerve. Uh, I don't necessarily subscribe to that view, but but there are some physicians that do, and so they were seeking a preparation um, that did not contain uh, an antimicrobial uh, preservative in it, again to to fight infection. Uh, the second one is that, uh, unfortunately, I think. Due to the uh, changes in reimbursement, there are some financial pressures, and these these uh, preparations by NECC uh, were less expensive uh, usually than those. Uh, so, uh, then what steroids prepared. are safe to use in the epidural space? Uh, there there are several uh, steroids that that are safe to use, and uh, as I as I indicated earlier, I'm actually of the opinion that that a small amount of uh, of antimicrobial uh, preservative solution, which again works to to kill any any bacteria or fungus that that is in in the uh, solution is, is advisable. Uh, I would personally want that. Uh, for example, if I were to have a uh, epidural steroid injection, I would actually ask the doctor just to make sure that he's using a preparation that uh, that does comp contain something to to kill any bacteria or, that or or fungus that that might be in the solution. Uh, again, this is very, very rare that you'd have such an instance uh, by evidence of the fact of the, the massive response that this aspergillosis was found. This is not something that is that is obviously routine in, in the uh, healthcare community. Um, there, some of the uh, commercially prepared preparations that are that are commonly used are uh, celestone or betamethasone. There is kenalog uh, is used, triamcinolone. Another one is called methylprednisolone, uh, which is the steroid uh, that um, NECC um, was distributing that, that uh, apparently contained the aspergillosis. There are some uh, physicians who feel that uh, depomedrol is not uh, one of the first-line cortisone preparations that should be used, and again, there are others who, who feel it is. So, um, uh, the, uh, and then one more commonly used uh, potential steroid is okay. called Decadron or Decadron. Um, for those of you who are worried, and it's been all over the news, um, uh, the outbreak of this form of meningitis is rare and it, it is non-contagious. Um, and um, if you feel like you've been treated, if it's possible you've been treated with a steroid injection prepared by the NECC, please go immediately to your doctor and, and talk to your doctor. Um, any other thoughts you have, doctor? Um, I think we've we've covered most of the important issues. Uh, it, as you mentioned, go to your doctor if you have any concerns. Just call them. They they can tell you right away whether or not they use any CC products. And just because they've used an NECC product does not mean that you will uh, get ill. But it's something that you have to watch. Watch for fevers, headaches, uh, light sensitivity. Again, that was Dr. John Prinskis. Medical Director of the Illinois Pain Institute. For more information, please visit IllinoisPain.com. So just to review, the outbreak is a rare form of meningitis, but it is not contagious. Health officials say that any patients who received an injection at one of the facilities beginning May 21st of this year 
and who began showing symptoms between one and three weeks after being injected should see their doctors right away. Typical meningitis symptoms include headache, fever, nausea, stiffness of the neck, confusion, dizziness, and discomfort from bright lights. And patients may have just one or two of these symptoms. The FDA is urging anyone who has experienced problems following an injection with the NECC product to report it to MedWatch, the FDA's voluntary reporting program, by phone at 1-800-FDA-1088 or online at www.fda.gov backslash MedWatch. You have been listening to PainPod at painresource.com.